There's only six weeks till Tonga take on France at the Rugby World Cup. Michael, what have you done to my house? Surprise, my man! We're gonna show our pride to the world! Can we get some tickets to the game, please? You really should have lined up yesterday like everyone else. The city council is putting together some entertainment for the Rugby World Cup. There's still a way we can get tickets. We've got a marching band and we could perform at the game. Ignore my son, he's an idiot. Mm -hmm. You guys do know that no one here can play an instrument. How hard can it be? We don't even have any instruments though. Is this supposed to be a brass band or a plastic band? This is Tongan ingenuity at its finest. All we need to do is learn one song and march in one straight line. Has the boy ever let you down? Uh, constantly. Oh, hello guys. How's the rehearsals going? You sit on my trumpet! This band sucks. Well, even if you guys do suck, at least we'll still get to watch the game. It's not just about getting tickets to the game. It's about the whole world seeing what Don can do, man. Look how far we came already. We will not be embarrassed in front of everyone. He and his band can make us all proud. Well done, everyone. Do you think you can do better? All right, thanks, Bonnie. Ongongo falala anga, mei he kau fai ongongo falala anga, takai a Australia mo tua puri anga. Kau mai ke tau kau kiai, pe mo ngahi ongongo mei tonga a Australia mo maamani ka toa ihe taule a fakatonga. Me a mai ihe po mo ni tiko toa fitu e fiafi taimi o Australia hahake ke ngahi ongongo ai Pacifica. My name is Simon Kofe. I'm the Minister for Justice, Communications and Foreign Affairs for the government of Tuvalu. I, in fact, grew up in different parts of the Pacific, so I have a, a deep appreciation for the different cultures in, in the Pacific. Climate change, uh, to me, is, is a challenge to not just Tuvalu, but to the world. In Tuvalu, it may take the form of sea level rise, seeing erosions in our coast. In other parts of the world, it might take the form of flooding, as we hear at the moment in Australia, bushfires, uh, droughts. And so that's the, the, the reality that we are facing. Uh, and it's something that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But it's important to recognize that the cause of this is that uh, it's human uh, activities that is contributing to the, to the problem. Malo e lau maria hou eiki mo le lei ai tonga sola mo e vulang kotoa tale tale leiki mo utolu ki e tau polo kalama talanoa me homo le etio mo e televizione pasifika ki he hou wani. Fia fia au pitoe polo kalama koini ki e farafi ilo aki atu ki atiki mo utolu ai minister lao, minister fitu utaki, pe mo e minister ki muli koia ai funua kaunga api koia ata utolu ko Tuvalu, ai ako Simon Coffey o glotonga i Australiani i ngahi uhinga. Whakapuri anga pe, ke maua e ngahi whakataha mo e ngahi kolo whenenisi, pe oku fiwhia lahi a polo kalamani ke whakahoko a fe po talanoa aki, kako e fe mea aki whoki pe moia o whekau aki pe mo e ngahi palapolema ke kehe oku whihanga ngai mahono whonua, o hangei koe whiliriwaki e ea, pe a mahono whakawhe paki i koia ngahi palapolema koia o e hiki hakeki o lunga, very, very pleased and very excited to welcome to Talanoa here on Pacifica TV and Radio, the Minister for Communications, Justice and Foreign Affairs from Tuvalu. He's here currently in Australia and it's Simon Kofe joining us here on the program to tell us a little bit about Tuvalu and a bit of a focus on climate change and some of the issues affecting uh, the future of Tuvalu. Um, Talofa and welcome to the program, Simon. Great to have you here. 
Carlo Fasuli, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here. I look forward to this uh, discussion. Look, I'd like to start by just giving you an opportunity to share a little bit about your background and how you ended up being in the role of the Minister for Foreign Affairs uh, for Tuvalu. Okay, well, uh, I mean, as, as you said, I'm uh, currently serving as a Minister for Justice, Communications and Foreign Affairs. I've been in office since uh, September of 2019. Uh, previously, I was working as a magistrate, so I'm a, I'm a lawyer by, by background. I um, practiced in Fiji, in private practice, for, for a few years, uh, and then went back to Tuvalu and worked um, the AG's office, people's lawyer, and also with the, the fisheries uh, department before um, moving to the, to the bench. Mm -hmm. um, I first went into politics in 2018, actually. I was in opposition uh, at the time. And the, um, the motivation at the time to, to get into politics was um, to help uh, with the constitutional review project that was ongoing at the time. And I thought I'm uh, best placed to contribute to the work as, as a parliamentarian. Fantastic. For our non-Tuvaluan viewers who are tuning in today, could you give us a little bit of an overview of Tuvalu as a nation in terms of population, topography, size? Tell us a little bit about what Tuvalu looks like. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tuvalu is made up of um, eight uh, atoll islands. Um, Tuvalu is the fourth smallest country in the world by land area. Uh, if you combine all the islands together, the total land area would be around 27 square kilometers. Um, the average uh, height above sea level is, is two meters. So wow. no mountains, no hills as you would have in Tonga and, and other places. So we're, we're quite flat, and um, which makes us very vulnerable to, uh, the, to the impacts of, of climate change, uh, in particular uh, sea level rise. Um, our main source of revenue for the government is from the fisheries. Um, we have a very vast uh, ocean, mm. uh, almost a million square kilometers. So we, we like to think of ourselves as uh, big ocean states. Um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, Bit of background on, on, on Tuvalu. <clears throat> That's fantastic. And on the ground, like you've mentioned climate change there, so it's, it's obviously a big topic. And I think when the Pacific and the world we hear, particularly on the world stage, we hear about uh, climate change, Tuvalu is one of the countries that springs to mind. Um, in terms of climate change on the ground in Tuvalu, what does that look like for the everyday Tuvalu? Mm -hmm. Well, we, um, we live with the realities of, uh, you know, the, the impacts of, of, of climate change. We live on very uh, thin strips of, of island. Uh, the capital island that I live on, the widest area is, a, is less than a kilometer uh, across. And so you basically have the, the open ocean on one side and the lagoon on, on, on the other. Uh, and so, I mean, our people have lived in this sort of condition for hundreds of years. Uh, and so we've, um, we've become a, a very resilient people. We've, we've lived with, uh, in harsh conditions, um, you know, droughts that we go through in, in, in the islands. Our main source of water is, is, is rainwater. So every household has their own catchment to, to catch their water. Uh, and so when we were out of rain for, for a few weeks or months, uh, you know, Tuvalu declares a, a state of emergency because we're, wow. we're, we're suffering, we're going through a, a drought. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, those are the conditions that we've, we've lived with. And I think it's made us um, strong and resilient to, to, to those uh, conditions. Mm. You mentioned fisheries as a key industry for Tuvalu. Obviously, fishing is, a, is one of the um, you know, um, yeah. means of, of people feeding themselves. What about agriculture? Obviously, very limited land in terms of the yeah. statistics you've just shared, but uh, what grows on Tuvalu? What do people grow yeah. in terms of their food? Yeah, so the, the other challenge we have as well is that the, the seawater actually seeps through the, the ground, uh, and, and so our soil becomes very salty, wow. and it makes it very difficult for us to, to grow uh, things in, in Tuvalu. But the things that we do grow, um, breadfruit, uh, bananas, uh, we have what we call um, pulaka. It's, it's, it's sort of a, like a taro, but probably not as good as a taro. Uh, but those are the things that we grow uh, in the islands. Otherwise, the rest is, is imported. Uh, obviously, we have our own pigs and chickens and, uh, and fish. We all know that the leading cause of climate crisis is fossil fuels. Tuvalu have joined Vanuatu and other nations calling for a fossil fuels non-proliferation treaty to steer our development models to peruse renewables and just transition away from fossil fuels. I think it's important that we champion this treaty 
encourage other countries to champion this, this sort of uh, initiative because it is consistent with our efforts to fight against the effects and impacts of, of, of climate change because I believe we stand in a very powerful position to speak to the world on issues like this. So I would only encourage others to support it as well. Now at the COP27 meeting, which was held in um, Egypt last year, mm -hmm. um, I've, we've seen online your speech where you were talking about an initiation of a, a fossil fuels non-proliferation treaty. What exactly is that and what does that mean for our Pacific? Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, fossil fuels contributes to about 80%, uh, 80 to 90% of um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions that is uh, contributing to the to, to climate change and the climate crisis that we are going through at the moment. Um, we feel that the, the Paris Agreement, although it focuses on, on emissions, it, it hasn't really addressed the, the production of, of fossil fuels, which then leads to, to, to emissions. Uh, and so we feel this is something that is missing in, in the Paris Agreement, and uh, we feel that it needs to be addressed. Uh, because we have countries that, uh, you know, uh, uh, pledging and making commitments to cut down on greenhouse gas emissions, and yet they are expanding on, uh, on the production of, of, of fossil fuels. So it, the, the two just don't, don't, don't seem to, uh, uh, to, to, to work out. Today I speak again from my country, from a small islet that is likely to be one of the first spots in Tuvalu to be submerged by rising sea levels. Since COP26, the world has not acted, and so we in the Pacific have had to act. We have seen temperature rise projections remain well above 1.5 degrees Celsius, foretelling the imminent disappearance of islets like this one. We have had to take our own precautionary steps with the Future Now project. As our land disappears, we have no choice but to become the world's first digital nation. Our land, our ocean, our culture are the most precious assets of our people. And to keep them safe from harm, no matter what happens in the physical world, will move them to the cloud. Islands like this one won't survive rapid temperature increases, rising sea levels and droughts, so we'll recreate them virtually. Piece by piece, we'll preserve our country, provide solace to our people, and remind our children and our grandchildren what our home once was. Mm. And of course, the other big project, which I'm so keen for you to share about, is the Future Now project. And this is, um, I mean, it's your pet project, it's your initiative. Uh, I know we've, we've chatted before a little bit about how it came about when back in your days at university, but I want to give you the floor to share about Future Now project and, and just share that with our, with our viewers. The, the Future Now project, uh, it basically represents the, the government's plan for the worst case scenario. And we're imagining that the worst case scenario for Tuvalu is, uh, as the scientists are saying, the islands could be fully submerged in the next 50 to 100 years. Uh, so that is a um, future that we that is coming, and, and, and all the, the science is pointing towards that. Uh, and so, although we continue our advocacy uh, to get countries to cut down on their greenhouse gas emissions, uh, we feel that as a as a responsible government, we need to put a plan in place, and that's what the Future Now uh, project uh, is. There are three key initiatives under the under the project. Uh, the first looks at uh, Tuvalu values and how we can use that on the international stage to to influence other countries to, to change the, the the policies and the approaches to uh, the, the, the foreign foreign relations, um, because Tuvalu is predominantly a, a uh, community-based society, like like other Pacific island countries. You know, we hear terminologies such as the Pacific way. You know, there's, there's a Pacific way of doing things. Uh, so we're community-based, and we we value relationships. We always consider the the well-being of every member of the community. We look after our elders. We live with our extended families, and so this 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 lifestyle and this way of life. We believe that um, there are values that underpin that way of life that are important to the context that we now find ourselves in. Because the the, the world has become so interconnected that we are like a single community. Uh, actions taken by one country affects uh, all of us, uh, and so we feel that. Um, the, the context is right for us to promote these values, these, these specific and Tuvaluan values, uh, to get countries not to, to just think about the immediate self-interest, national interest, and forgetting about the, the well-being of, of all countries. And so those, those are, so we're using values in our policies to try and influence other countries. 
And so that, initi- that, that, that is a, a part of the, the Future Now project. We park our values at the forefront of, uh, of everything we, we do. Well, Tuvalu, like uh, many other Pacific Island countries, we value relationships. We live with extended families. We value the, the well-being of the community as a whole. And so I think some of those cultural values, traditional values that we have in the Pacific, quite relevant for the time that we're living in right now. We've become so interconnected that the world has in fact become a single community. So I think given the, the global context that we now find ourselves in, it's important to now look at the well-being of all nations, looking at the greater good and seeing what the responsibility of every country to achieving that well-being. The, the second initiative uh, looks at um, retaining our statehood uh, under international law now. Uh, in order for you to exist as a state, you need a, a physical territory, uh, a population, a government, and, and the capacity to enter into relations with, with other countries. Uh, so if we were to take that definition um, in, in, in Tuvalu's uh, case, we could lose our territory, our people could be forced to relocate because the conditions have become so harsh in, in the islands. Uh, so we could in fact lose our statehood. And tied to our statehood obviously is our, our rights and our entitlements as a state to, to vote at the UN, to have rights to our exclusive economic zone, our right to have a country code uh, top uh, domain name on the internet, uh, which we, we are making a lot of money from. The dot TV. Well, TV is. <laughs> so we, we feel that it's important for us to retain our statehood, even if we, we were to, to lose our, our physical territory or, or if we are forced to, uh, to relocate. And so the way we've done that is, um, We've actually put it in our foreign policy that uh, countries that want to establish ties with us or that want to reaffirm relations with Tuvalu, that one of the conditions is that you recognize the permanency of our statehood and our claims to our maritime zones. Wow. Uh, and so we have about nine countries now that have signed up on that and recognize that. And uh, the numbers will just continue to grow. And, and the more countries recognize this, it will contribute to the, to the formation of new customary international law. Uh, and so that's, that's the approach that we, uh, we, we've undertaken. And the third and uh, final initiative is the, the digital nation uh, concept. And so because we're imagining a future where we are dispersed, we're forced to relocate, uh, we, and we still retain our, our status as a, as a state under international law, we need some sort of framework or platform that ensures that we are coordinated as a, as a government, as a people, we're still managing our resources, our sovereign assets. And so this is where the, the digital nation uh, concept comes in. And so I think we're very fortunate that there's technology available now mm. for us to achieve these things. Uh, and so that's the, in a nutshell, the, the Future Now project. <clears throat> it, it's amazing. And I, I remember your speech to the United Nations, I believe it was, where, and we'll show it as well on this program, where you're doing a speech on a, on a, on a beach. Not your first speech, but one of many you've done from the islands and the camera pans away and then we see this digital island appearing behind you. Where was that filmed? Is that an island that's going to go under or has gone underwater? So that's actually an island, uh, one of the 32 islets that forms uh, the lagoon in Funafuti. Uh, and it's, like, it's, it's an actual island and um, we've taken um, LIDAR mapping of the, the island, uh, drone footage, photos uh, to replicate the, the, the island. Uh, and so I was standing there. I wasn't really standing on the actual island. It's it's a virtual copy, a virtual uh, copy of the the island. Uh, and that is actually where we launched the digital nation concept. So we're going to make mm-hmm. a, a virtual mm-hmm. copy of of Tuvalu. Wow, mm-hmm. that's phenomenal. So I guess what you what, what you've been saying there. Worst case scenario, the people of Tuvalu pr- are preparing themselves that within the next generation, they most probably will have to relocate somewhere else, but will not lose their identity as Tuvaluans Mm. because the nation will still exist in a digital format. Tuvalu is not the only country that's going to experience the the impacts of climate change. Has there been any interest from any Caribbean, Indian Ocean, Pacific Island, small, low-lying countries around the world? Mm. Well, in fact, we're getting a lot of support from... um, the, the small islands in the Caribbean. In fact, the, the nine countries that I, I mentioned earlier, uh, three of those countries are from the uh, from, from the Caribbean, and so they mm. they are aware of, of what we're doing. They, they're showing a lot of interest uh, in that. But the the digital nation uh, concept, uh, on the one hand, it's to main, retain our our status as a state, ensure that we are um, coordinated as a nation, 
but the the other important part of it is is the the culture and how we are able to preserve a culture and this is where we feel that the the metaverse platform uh, is 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 the right platform to um, to share our, our culture share our history uh, and Tuvaluans anywhere in the world or even anyone in the world really who wants to access and to learn about Tuvalu uh, can can access it. In Tuvalu, our islands are sacred to us. They contain the mana of our people. They were the home of our ancestors. They are the home of our people today. And we want them to remain the home of our people into the future. This is why this call to you from Tuvalu is not just a political statement. It is a call that reverberates from our eight islands and our 12,000 people to the international community. We are petitioning and demanding that global net zero be secured by mid-century, that 1.5 degrees be kept within reach, that urgently needed climate finance be mobilized to address loss and damage, and that there be greater accountability from all nations and people to act as good stewards of the earth. But we are also not going to wait for the world to get its act together. We are looking to the future and preparing now for the worst case scenario where our lands disappear and our people must leave. We will not stand idly by as the water rises around us. We are not just talking in Tuvalu, we are mobilizing collective action at home, in our region and on the international stage to secure our future. Could you share a bit about those values? I've, I've seen you share this before, but if you could just share for our viewers a little bit about what are those values? What are the forefront values of your foreign policy, which are the values of the people of Tuvalu? Well, the, the, the values are also contained in our constitution, the Tuvalu constitution. Uh, and so these are not my own ideas. These are our forefathers when, they, uh, uh, when Tuvalu became independent. These are the values that they felt uh, important to the stability of the, the country. Uh, one of which was is uh, respect, um, family discipline, self-help, um, cooperation, collaboration. Um, I guess the values that are very common to, to a community-based uh, society. So those are some of the, the, the values that are reflected in our constitution. And also that Tuvalu is, is, is founded on Christian principles. Uh, that's also a very important part and aspect of, of Tuvaluan culture. You mentioned a little bit earlier in your introduction that uh, you were part of a committee for constitutional review. Uh, is that review still ongoing and what are the kinds of things that might change perhaps or reform in the Tuvaluan constitution? Yes, I'm, I'm actually chairing the parliamentary committee that's looking at the review. Um, we have a draft bill that's, that's ready now for to be tabled at the next parliament session. Uh, and, and some of the, the changes that we expect from that is um, looking at strengthening the independence of the judiciary, uh, for example, um, because currently the cabinet basically decides on, on who becomes a judge. Uh, and we felt that it's important to, to ensure the independence of the judiciary. So we, we did this provision now to ensure that there's a, an independent body that, that does that. Um, there's also provisions around culture, ensure that we're strengthening the position of culture. And also our, our traditional institutions like the Falakao Pule will now be recognized also in, in, our, in our constitution. So those are some of the changes that, are, that we're introducing. Coming to bilateral relations, if I'm not mistaken, the Republic of Nauru and Tuvalu are probably one of the only two Pacific nations that still maintain diplomatic ties with Republic of China, Taiwan. And is there any possibility of that changing? Why has Tuvalu stayed with Taiwan while so many other countries in the Pacific have gone for the one China policy? Well, this is where I think um, our values are very important because in, in the islands, we, we value relationships. Um, you have to be a loyal friend, you have to be trustworthy, uh, values that are very important to, to Pacific Islands. And I feel that uh, often when we come into, to, into uh, I guess, the international arena, you, you don't really think of those things. But uh, for our government, we're, we're very determined to ensure that the values that are true at the community level are the same values that we carry as leaders on the international plane. And so I think maintaining that relationship with Taiwan on the basis of that, purely on trust, on, on being loyal to, to, to Taiwan. Uh, if there is any reason to, to change, it can't be because of money or we're being lured or bribed to, to, to making that, that switch. Uh, that cannot be the, I think that would completely defeat the, 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 the values and that we stand by. On the topic of money and finance and economy, 
We know that obviously there's a um, Tuvalu makes um, revenue from fisheries. There's the dot .tv domain, which is very well known throughout the globe. Um, but another emerging industry is... Um, stop no, there. <laughs> stop there. There's no reason to, to, to go further. Hmm. But those people that have come to Tuvalu, they, they see the, obviously the, the, the beauty of, of the, the islands, the, this, you know, is un, a lot of the islets on, on the capital are uninhabited, so people can just go there and be the only person on, on, on the island. Um, but I think we, we need to develop, uh, uh, you know, uh, something that is unique, that is different to, uh, to every, everywhere else. And, and I think ecotourism might, might be be an option. Um, I think climate change has put us on the map. Perhaps that could be a, an area that we could also um, explore. You've highlighted there accessibility is an issue. And um, just for the benefit of viewers, the, the, the way to get to Tuvalu, the only international route is Suva Funafuti yeah. Direct, and that's with um, Fiji Airways. Um, in terms of air services for Tuvalu, is there any plans to expand? To Can you extend your runway where you are? Or is it this is the limit due to land in terms of air services to Tuvalu? Well, we do have a plan to reclaim a land and to build a, a new uh, airstrip. Uh, that's, that's probably a, a mid to long term plan that the government uh, has at the moment. We've also uh, procured our own plane that we're going to be servicing uh, domestic. That's going to be flying domestic. Uh, but I think in, in the coming year or two, we'll be looking at the international uh, so that we will have our own airline. And in terms of um, trying to lure Tuvaluans who are living in the diaspora back home, is there an initiative? I know, for example, with Niue and Togalau and some of the and other smaller states, says, uh, isn't they encouraging some of their people to come back home, to come back home, invest in all that? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you, you yourself, as someone who spent many years overseas, who've gone back to back home, what kind of opportunities are there for our Tuvaluan people overseas to go back um, back to Tuvalu? Yeah, we'd, we would certainly like to have um, Tuvaluans come back and, and contribute to. Uh, to the building of, of the nation, um, but obviously we understand that there are um, genuine reasons why people leave as well, uh, looking for better opportunities, better education for uh, for the children. But um, I mean, this is why I, I I love this idea of a digital nation because you, you don't have to be there physically. Uh, you, you, there are many ways that we can actually contribute to the, the building of Tuvalu and providing services online uh, that can help help Tuvalu. Um, and I think that's where the, the, the future is, is heading. I mean, we're spending more and more of our time uh, online uh, and hopefully it can be more constructive as opposed to just consuming things online. Uh, and that's the, the, the mindset change that we, we're looking to, to bring as well in, to, to the islands, to Tuvalu and, and to our diaspora. Um, in terms of climate change, obviously a big issue for Tuvalu. What are some of the other issues that, that everyday Tuvaluans are facing on the ground in Tuvalu, you know, in terms of, you know, cost of living and uh, obviously the pandemic has yeah. been through Tuvalu as well. And what are some of the everyday issues that people are facing? Yeah, uh, yeah. Tuvalu was one of the, the last countries that uh, obviously we received COVID-19. It was towards the end of, of last year. So that was something that we've been going through for some time. The cost of living has definitely uh, gone up. Um, you know, people are finding it hard because Tuvalu is so isolated and uh, getting products to Tuvalu is, is, is very costly. Freight is very high. Uh, and so these are some of the issues that we, uh, some of the challenges that we, we have uh, in the islands. Um, we had a drought uh, not, not so long ago, about a month ago, uh, over Christmas. Um, and these are things that come and go. Uh, and these are the challenges that we, we face in, in the islands. From a diplomatic perspective, obviously, you're, you're flying the flag very high for Tuvalu and for the issues of climate change. How important is it for groups like Pacific Warriors 360 and some of these other groups that are made up from the diaspora here in Australia to keep on um, advocating for countries like Tuvalu? I think it's very important. That, that, and this is why it's important that we, we work together. Um, I mean, the Pacific, we, we are very, have a lot of uh, things in common, of common values, and uh, our hope is that... Uh, other Pacific Island countries can also be join us to, to, to advocate on issues like, uh, like climate change. I think young people can be very influential. I believe that every generation has something to contribute. We, we have the wisdom of our elders, but what the young people have is, is the passion and the drive to do things and, and the innovation and creativity. And I think that space is very important and, and young people really need to be confident in themselves, have opinions about issues, uh, we need creativity to come from the Pacific and from young people wherever you are in the world. 
you know, I came with the perspective that we have a message for the world and that there is value in what we have in terms of our culture, our values and principles uh, that underpins our way of life. We live with the, the realities of uh, climate change. We have a responsibility to warn, to forewarn the world of what is coming ahead. In Tuvalu, we are living the realities of climate change, sea level rise, as you stand watching me today at COP26. We cannot wait for speeches when the sea is rising around us all the time. Climate mobility must come to the forefront. We must take bold, alternative action today to secure tomorrow. Faftailasi, Tuvalu Modetu. Finally, I just want to give you an opportunity. Is there anything additional you'd like to add about Tuvalu or a final message you'd like to leave with our viewers? No, I think it's, it's, it's important for us to continue to, um, to advocate um, issues of, of climate change and, and to bring uh, awareness and, and knowledge to, to the people. Uh, one of the approaches that we've taken is um, rather than just trying to, to get leaders to, to, to come up with strong policies and actions on climate change, um, the approach that we've taken is to reach out to, to, to the wider public uh, because we feel that when the public uh, uh, have the knowledge and have the understanding, they are the ones that put pressure on, on, on their leaders uh, to, to take stronger climate action. Um, and so this is why I think it's important uh, for our partners to, to, to work with us and, and uh, to get the message out to, to everyone. Awesome. So I want to thank you on behalf of Pacifica TV Radio. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming in and sharing uh, future now and the initiatives that uh, you've put forward in, in your role in government uh, for the betterment of Tuvaluans, both in Tuvalu and Tuvaluans at large around the world. And it's an encouragement and some mm -hmm. of the things that you've shared are certainly enlightened, I'm sure, of other Pacific Islanders from different backgrounds, um, including our Tongan people as well. So, Thank you, Sulitza. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Koya <laughs> My name is Simon Kofe. I'm the Minister for Justice, Communications and Foreign Affairs with the government of Tuvalu and I'm a Pacific Treaty Champion. ฟอร์ตัวโกมอยดิจิเซลโอคุวาเตฟังมาลีเกเกกุนะฮาวสโคลาซิปิบาวเซียนาวนาวะโกมังฮิแล็ปท็อปโฟเฟอุมเมปัง
i mo oni. Kia toi whakaiki ki whekau aki mo ngā weni, kā taki o fitu taki mai ki ta talanoa, ki whonga mo ita tongi o kuala lava ki mao tokoni atu hai. Talanoa kia pulumu mo unga he ahoni, i he whika telefoni koe noa whā, noa whā, tolu whā whā, hiva valu nima. Noa whā, noa whā, tolu whā whā, hiva valu nima. Emaili mo unga at y7mail.com, whakai kia pēsi au pulumu mo unga he tohi whawhonga pe koe WhatsApp. Whakatokanga i ange e mao tua sila, koe taha hiva nima oi Miller Road, Villawood, se ne ni wasa wele, wa taha ono tolu. Malo au pito be e whakapapatu, mei he timi ngā ue e mo unga Enterprises Warehouse, MEW. William Vake Sikahele is the owner of Astute Financial Greystains with over 20 years experience in the banking and finance industry here in Australia. Will has helped thousands of people achieve their Australian dream of purchasing residential property along with saving existing homeowners thousands on their home loans. Will can access up to 30 lenders to help you make an informed decision on which lender and product best meets your financial needs. For all your finance and general insurance needs, call Will on 0400 323 864. That's 0400 323 864. There's only six weeks till Tonga take on France at the Rugby World Cup. Maka, what have you done to my house? Surprise, my man! We're gonna show our pride to the world! Can we get some tickets to the game, please? You really should have lined up yesterday like everyone else. The City Council is putting together some entertainment with the Rugby World Cup. There's still a way we can get tickets. We've got a marching band and we could perform at the game. Ignore my son, he's an idiot. Mm -hmm. You guys do know that no one here can play an instrument. How hard can it be? We don't even have any instruments though. Is this supposed to be a brass band or a plastic band? This is Tongan ingenuity at its finest. All we need to do is learn one song and march it one straight line. Has the boy ever let you down? Uh, constantly. Oh! Hello, guys. How's the rehearsals going? You sit on my trumpet! This band sucks. Well, even if you guys do suck, at least we'll still get to watch the game. It's not just about getting tickets to the game. It's about the whole world seeing what Don can do, man. How far we came already. We will not be embarrassed in front of everyone. He and his band can make us all proud. Well done, everyone. Good. You think you can do better? <laughs>